The periodic fever syndromes are a group of diseases which are due to abnormalities in the very primitive half of our immune system, the half that in fact we share with very primitive organisms down as far as crabs, and which we are born with and which always respond in the same way. We know that diseases which result in overactivity of uh, this innate immune system can result in apparently unprovoked attacks of fever accompanied by inflammation affecting other parts of the body, usually resulting in symptoms such as skin rash, inflamed eyes, joint pain, muscle pain, and sometimes inflammation of the lining of the body cavities, which can result in very severe pain in the abdomen or in the chest or around your heart, or sometimes around the lining of the brain, resulting in very severe headaches. They're very rare. Most that we know about are genetic and are inherited, but there are also certainly some that aren't and which can be acquired. And most, but not all of them, are predominantly diseases of children. These have been a major advance. So familial Mediterranean fever, the first of these diseases, was only given that name uh, just around the time of the Second World War. The gene responsible for it was only identified in 1997. Since then, at least another 11 genes have been identified as causing auto-inflammatory diseases and the periodic fever syndromes, and we think more of these will be found. They are extremely unpleasant diseases, usually onsetting in childhood, with a major burden of morbidity and disadvantage to the people affected, and they can have very nasty long-term consequences, and untreated uh, can both blight long-term quality of life but also can result in life-shortening diseases and very significant long-term disability. The periodic fever syndromes can be very difficult to distinguish clinically, particularly if you don't see a lot of patients. Um, they also can be very difficult to recognise in the first place because they mimic other much more common conditions, particularly in children where it can just look like recurrent viral infections. Once you've thought of the diagnosis, uh, the problem is then finding a centre who knows about it uh, to get a second opinion and also to get uh, genetic testing. But the number of centres that do this are fairly small and uh, the number of centres which can do genetic testing are even smaller and unfortunately tend to be concentrated in the wealthier parts of the world. So particularly uh, in Asia and in Africa we think we're probably missing lots and lots of children where the desired diagnosis is just never considered. Most importantly these are painful, recurrent, debilitating diseases which have a major impact with children on their ability to complete their education satisfactorily, to socialise, to lead the sort of full and active life that you would like. And in adults can have an impact on employment, on fertility um, and on, again, the general ability to function as a fully autonomous person.